Hi, everyone. Hi, Zohar. So good to see you again. Amazing. Amazing. Thanks for being here, by the way. Um, I am from Family Services of Greater Vancouver. And um, the program that I am coming from is called Money and Skills. We are building blocks to financial wellness. I'm just going to speed a little bit through this to just get through the material. And our programs are located on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of um, the Coast Salish people, including the Musqueam, Squamish, Slivotut, Kwantlen, um, and Tuasen First Nations. And we are aiming to build a stronger family, supporting youth in overcoming whole, um, homelessness, in ending violence against women, children, and um, seniors, and developing more inclusive communities. And um, our vision, our core value is education and empowerment, especially regarding financial literacy. We have different workshops throughout the year. Um, and we want to provide individuals and families with unbiased, accurate information to empowering them to make better, more informed financial decisions. So this was all the introduction. And now we can actually get to the main topic. And Zohar, um, you can let me know whenever you want me to go slower. Um, I don't know how you're gonna let me know <laughs> because you won't. I, I can't hear you. But you she can put it in the in the chat if she needs you to go a bit slower. Okay. 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 Yes. So the agenda for today, the things that we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about what is a will. We're gonna mention a few will facts. We are gonna talk about the top ten reasons to have a will. Then we're gonna talk about the state representative, funeral planning, grant of administration. And we're also gonna to touch base on questions that are covered in Bill Question. I just wanted to also mention that this is a basic introduction to um, writing wills and preparation for wills um, because we just have a shorter time and I just wanna to touch base on the basic aspect for getting into the details. For more complicated or more detailed stuff, there are lawyers and other people in the community that might be more helpful. This is just me going over to the general and basic idea of the whole will preparation. Um, I also wanna introduce who I am. My name is Farnak Gorbani. I'm part of the Family Services of Greater Vancouver's financial empowerment team. I facilitate financial literacy workshops in both Farsi and English with my passion to help newcomers and people with low incomes to become financially literate and access government benefit and make the most of their money. I also provide one-on-one -on -one financial coaching. I will um, include my email and the number at the end of this PowerPoint so you can actually have access to this resource as well. I'm very happy to be here and thanks to ISS for having us today. Okay. I'm going to begin by talking about what's a will. So basically, will is a legal document that states how you want your estate to be divided once you die, once you pass away. So what is an estate? So your estate includes what you own called assets and what you owe called liabilities. So it's not only the things that you own, it's also the things that you are having to like a debt that you have to pay back. That's also parts of your estates. And when you write a will, you basically this make a decision regarding all those matters, the things that you have and the debts that you have. It can be line of credit, it can be mortgage, it can be any sorts of debt that you have. Those are called liabilities. Those are parts of your estates. So why are you having this workshop and why it's important? Because an up-to-date will will help your estate representative, which I will get into in the next few slides, which is also called executor. When you write an update will, it will help that person to take care of your wishes when you die. So it's about you having autonomy over your estate and helping that other person to actually follow your wishes when you're no longer here. Just gonna wait for Zohre to finish it. And are you done interpreting? Amazing, okay. So I wanna to touch upon a few will facts. It's so interesting, about 62% of Canadians do not have a written will. 62% is a lot. It's just that um, we, if people are not encouraged in a school or we don't really talk about this topic because it might be a sensitive topic. If people don't wanna think about the time that they're not gonna be here. That's why the, this topic hasn't been around so much, 
but it's good to have the knowledge because it gives you an autonomy and control over how you want your estate to be divided. Another fact is that you are not legally required to prepare a will. So the government of Canada are not put this pressure on the citizens or people that are living here to legally be required. It's not a requirement for you, but it's recommended. That's also a fact that I wanted to talk about. And it's a good idea to get professional legal help when you make a will. So when you're actually deciding to write a will or make a will, it's a great idea to get professional legal help that are out there for you as a resource. Another real fact is that keep, please keep your will up to date because your life and your life circumstances change us through time. So it's very important that your will is also changed with you and it doesn't stay the same. I might write a will right now or today or tomorrow, but um, in 10 years from now, I will be in a totally different position. I will have different assets. I will have different liabilities. So it's very important to actually update my will every few years once my life circumstances are changed. And the other one is that wills are important even if you are not sick or old. So wills are important no matter what. It, uh, we don't have to be old in order to write a will or we don't have to be very sick like have a terminal illness to write a will. It's actually recommended for everyone at some point in their life to, their, to write the will because of again, the autonomy and control. And the whole, and by writing the will, you basically make the life of your executor easier and the people that are left after you. You will do a favor to yourself and to other people that are going to be there after you pass away. And life is uncertain and we unfortunately don't know what's going to happen every day. So um, just to be on the safe side, it's very recommended to write a will. And we are done with this slide. Zorjan, are you done? Okay. So now again, I want to mention the top, top 10 reasons to have a will because um, some aspects might happen when you pass away and you don't have a will. And I want to get to it in this um, section. So one of the reasons that we recommend people writing a will is to decide how your estate will be distributed. What does this mean? Basically, it, you have the estate that you have. When you write a will, Again, you are the person who decide about everything and how everything needs to be managed. So if you want to have a voice and if you want to have an opinion regarding that, that's why we write a will. You also, with writing a will, you decide who will take care of your minor children. If you have a minor children and um, you know that you might be passing, passed away at some point, you have a terminal illness, or you just know that you have minor children, for that one day that you might not be around, it's great to have it actually will and write about who do you, who would you want to be have as a person that take care of your minor children. Another great, great actually reason to write a will is to avoid a lengthy probate process. So I wanna explain this probate process a little bit here. I wanna uh, pause. So when you write a will, when you write a will and you the will is already here, it is still has to go through a probate process. Probate process is by the court. They will read uh, the document that you wrote to make sure that it's legal, to make sure that it's official. You as the person wrote this will and everything in the will is accurate and up to date. So the process is still there. But imagine when the will is there, it takes less time for the court and everybody else to actually process the will that you have. However, on the other side, if you don't have a will at all, this probate process is still in place, but it will be such a lengthy process that it will take minimum of two years for a minimum of two years for the court to actually complete this um, process because they have to first find out who this person is, who are their relatives, where this person lives, how old is this person, um, what are the assets of this person, what are the liabilities and the things that this person owns, um, how many inheritance are there? This process is lengthy. This process is lengthy for the government and also for the family of the person who passed away. So in order to avoid all these problems and all these things that it needs to be processed, by just writing a will, you can make the life of everyone easier, the government on one side and also the people that are left after you pass away. Because the probate process, it takes so long if there's no will. 
They also have to go and check if the, the things that you have, it's under your name. It's just so many legal documents that needs to be processed. So that's why we recommend writing a will because it just makes it faster. Also to minimize estate taxes, um, if you write your will, the tax that you have on your estates will be less than if you don't write a will. When you don't have a will, because government has to go, has to go through all this process, the estate taxes that you have is higher. It's just like an incentive for people that are living actually to write their will because they will minimize their taxes that are on their estate. Also, another reason is you decide who will wind up the affairs of your estate. You decide who will do the um, affairs of your estate, which is might be different than inheritance. So, for example, I might have two children, as an example, and those two children will be my inheritance. They will get the wealth or the any assets that I have after I pass away. But I might not pick them as the executor of my will. The executor is would be my, for example, my close friend that I will ask that person to actually um, follow everything that I written in the will, how much she or he will distribute money to it, to my children, for example. So that person, the executor can be different than the inheritance of the person who's, who passed away. Also in writing your will, you can disinherit individuals who would otherwise stand to inherit. I might have uh, children or I might, I might have a child or I might have someone who is going to be in my inheritance, but I don't want them to actually have any of my wealth. In my will, I can actually mention this and the person who's executing my will would follow that and that will will be followed exactly like that. So it also gives you that option. You can also make gifts and charitable donations, you can mention on your will, if you wanna donate your money to any charity, if you wanna gift, you may, if you wanna send a gift to someone, if you have a close friend that lives across the world and you want them to actually be part of your inheritance, you can have anything that you want on your will basically. And to avoid greater legal challenges, as I was actually mentioning, there are lots of legal challenges when you don't have a will. They have to go through the whole process of actually seeing who you are and everything, all the assets and liabilities and all the inheritance that are you having, like whether it's a family, a spouse, common law. So to avoid all that, all that greater legal challenges, which is very lengthy and it can also be costly, you can just write a will and uh, make it easier. Also, um, another reason to have a will is because you can change your mind if your life can, circumstances change. So I write a will today, for example, and in 10 years from now on, I decide that I don't want my oldest daughter to get to be inherited from my wealth. In 10 years, by writing the will again and making it an up to date, I can make that decision. So if I change my mind and my life circumstances change, I can actually do it again in the will. I can update my will. And Tim, another reason to have a will is because tomorrow is not promised, uh, unfortunately, as I mentioned. Life is uncertain and we don't really know what's going to happen. So it's always better to be safe and it's always better to um, write down everything that all the wishes that I have regarding my assets. Dorjan, are you be good? Okay, and I'm just gonna check the chat quickly. Okay. Is the pace good or is it fast? Fast, okay, I'm gonna go a little bit slower. I'm gonna go a little bit. I was just worried that we are not gonna have enough time, but that's okay, I'm gonna go a little bit slower. Okay, so here I'm gonna talk about your estate representative. So who is a state representative? This person is the person that I choose, the person who writes the will, to manage my estate after I die. And this person might not necessarily be the person that is going to be an inheritance. It might not be my children. It might not be my spouse. It might not be the person who is actually going to have my money after I die. It can just be a friend that I have. It can be a person like my manager, my mentor somebody that I trust that he or she can manage my estate after I die. It can also be my inheritance, but it doesn't have to be. It's called executor in the system or estate trustee or liquidator. 
That's what it's called. So you choose this person and you also write it in your will that my executor is, for example, Zohre. Zohre is a friend of mine. She will be managing my will and my estate after I pass away. And I will tell Zohre that you are my executor. And Zohre has this option to say, yes, I will be your executor or say no. So Zohre is not obligated to actually say yes. If somebody asks you to be an executor, you can say no. You don't have to be an executor. But if you're comfortable with being an executor, you can for sure accept it. And you also want one thing that I wanted to mention. I can pick Zohre as being my executor now. And in five years, I might not actually be in touch with Zohre anymore. And I want to change it. I can change my executor. I will write an up-to-date will again and mention that I don't want I have the new executor that I have is uh, not Zohre, it's Sara, for example, another person. So the executor that you pick, that executor can also be changed if your life circumstances change. Because we also don't know um, if um, the life is very unpredictable. We don't know if the executor that we pick right now will be the executor in a couple of down the road. So that's why you have this option to change your executor. And your executor also have this option to change, to say to you that I don't want to be your executor anymore. You, we cannot really force people to be our executor. I just wanted to put it out there. Any questions so far? Zorj and RV better? Is the pace better? Okay, I'm gonna move to the next slide. Okay, part of writing your will is about funeral planning. And as sad as this topic is, it's also great to talk about it because I feel like so much of the time we um, avoid talking about hard things, but the financial literacy regarding all this is very important. I feel like it will be more beneficial to us to talk about it. So you can prepare financially for costs associated with your cremation, the funeral, or the funeral service by prepaying for these expenses with an end of life service. So before you pass away, you can basically plan for your whole funeral and it will be by true writing your will. You can pick the place that you want your funeral to be. You can pick the, uh, the amount that you wanna be spend on your funeral. You can mention all this in your will actually. Because a death in family can be very stressful and expensive and we know all this. So preparing and preparing for your um, death will ensure that your loved ones aren't responsible for these expenses. It's just you taking the responsibility and ownership um, uh, about your funeral as well, about planning for it, about prepaying it, about uh, deciding of how you want it to be rather than people, uh, your family, deciding upon it and undergo so much stress because of the finances, financial problems that might be coming up, they might not have enough money. So it would also be very beneficial to write a will and talk about how you want your funeral to be planned and how much money you wanna be put aside for your funeral. Are we good? Okay. So, what happens when you die without a will? Um, we hopefully don't want this to be happen because it was the, as I mentioned before, the probate process would be very lengthy and it would just be harder for your loved ones after you pass away um, regarding your assets. But in worst case scenario, if this happens, if you die without a will, VCs Wills and Estates Succession Act, that is called WESA, that is what the organization called, they control how your estate will be divided. And what happens, just to give you an, a little bit of details, they begin the process of probate and they begin by all the debts that you have. So they check every all the assets that you have, everything that you own, but they also check all the debts that you have and the priority is with your debts. 
So they will want to uh, get rid of your debts first, and then whatever that's left would be divided between your inheritance. And this process will again take a lot of time to go through all this process legally and documentally and document everything officially. So it will take minimum of two years, most of most probably somewhere between four to five years, people are still engaged with the court and everything regarding the wills and estate succession act. Are we good? Okay. So if you don't have a will and um, you don't have a will and they probate, the probate process happens, who can apply to administer your, your estate? So who can go actually and says that um, Faranak passed away. I wanna see how much money Faranak has. I wanna know how much depth she has, who can actually do this? So your spouse can do this. If you have a wife or a husband or any spouse or common law, a relative can do this. It can be a daughter, it can be a sister, it can be brother, it can be a son. Or if not, not a spouse or a relative is around, any other eligible person, a friend or a professional, uh, such as a lawyer or accountant might even um, get into the probate process and administer your estate. The, and it's called grant of administration. So it's a grant for administrating your estate. It can be your spouse or relative. And if you don't have a spouse or relative around, it can be any other eligible person that court picks. So court might actually pick up a lawyer and lawyer will get to actually administer your estate, grant of administration. They might actually pick a friend of the person as well if the friend is available. But at that point, it can be anyone. It can be even an accountant of the family that gets to doing this process. So how you can actually make the job easier for your executor. If you remember, I mentioned that you pick an executor and this person is the person who's responsible to do all, all your wishes, to manage all your wishes. So how can you make it easier for that person? You basically can make it easier by discuss your wishes with the executor, including the burial and cremation. So get together with your executor and talk about everything that's on the wheel. I want to inherit, I want to, I want my daughter to get this, this, this. I don't want my son to be inherited. I want a friend of mine to get this, and I don't want my spouse to be inherited from this part. Everything, every wish that you have, it's helpful to actually talk about, discuss it with your executor before you pass away. It's also very helpful to register your will with the wills registry. And that's how you make it official. And um, it's also very important to tell your executor where the original will is kept. If you are keeping it in your house, if it's in the bank, in the safe box, it's important to actually for your executor to know where is the original document will be kept, but also make sure that you will register it with wills registry and that's how it gets official. Another um, way that you can make it easier is to keep it an up to date will. So keep, an up, keep it up to date. What does it mean is basically add anything that you own once in a couple of years, because you might actually add, like money might be added to your account or you might actually investing and more things might come in your way or there might be debt or anything. So bank records, investments, property, pensions, keep an up-to-date detailed record of all this in your will. It will make it easier. And talk with your beneficiaries and explain what your plans are. This can prevent problems later. So what does that mean? Well, I, beneficiaries are people like my, if I have a children, they will be my beneficiaries. They will be my inheritance that they will get money from my wealth. Um, on top of me talking to my executor who was responsible for following my wishes, it's also very helpful for me to talk to my children about the decisions that I made. It's good to talk to them that, okay, I decided that you are gonna have this portion of my wealth. You are gonna have that portion. I want to send this to that friend of mine and who's living there just to let them know what your plans are. Because when you pass away, if they don't have any idea, 
then there would just be lots of problems and lots of, you know, drama between the executor and the people in the family fighting for what's going on. Why is this like that? Whereas if you go and you talk to them in person, it would just makes it easier. They already know they are already aware of your plans. And it's also recommended to review your will and choice of executor every few years or when circumstances change. So I also mentioned this before, your will changes with you and your life circumstances. If you write one will, it doesn't have to stay the same because your life doesn't stay the same. So once your life circumstances change, you might not even feel trusty with the executor that you picked 10 years ago. So you can actually update your will. You can mention that the previous executor was Faranag, the new executor is sort of from this date, for example. And also update your will when there are significant changes. If one of your daughters passes away, God forbid sooner than you, update your will by mentioning that this daughter has already passed away. I want their, my grandchildren to now be the beneficiaries of my wealth, for example. Just mentioning every bits and pieces of the detail would later on make the life of your loved ones and your family way easier. I'm not just letting you know we're two minutes away, but okay. um, don't we stress. <laughs> cool. Okay, okay. So I just want to cover the questions that are covered in the will questionnaire. When you write a will, there are 20 questions that basically you're, you are filling it in. I just wanted to mention this quickly. So you are writing your full name, age, birthplace, gender, citizenship, residential address, you are talking about if you are married, if you have a spouse, their sin number, date of birth, date. Is there a prenuptial agreement from the previous marriage or from this marriage, yes or no? If you are living common law, do you plan on marrying the person or not? If either you or your spouse have been divorced, the details of the marriage, date of the divorce, judgments, everything. Obligations pursuant to a previous marriage. If you have a previous marriage and you are obligated to that ex-wife or ex-husband, all these things will be asked in the will questionnaire and you write it down. Are any of your children born outside of the marriage? This is going to be also there. You can mention if you have children, list them with their full name, relationship to you and date of birth. Mention any deceased children, name any stepchildren. Are they to be treated the same as your naturally born ch children in your will or not? If there are grandchildren, state their full name, their parents' name, the relationship, the date of birth. Are there any mentally or physically disabled children? This is also important. It will be in part of the will questionnaire. Name the person you wish to act as the children's guardian if they are under 18. List the estimated value of your assets as of today's date. This is all the things that will be in will questionnaire. Just, I just put it out there so that you know what you will be answering. It's just good to have an idea. And oh, there's still five more. List the estimated debt with dollar amount. Name your personal representative or executor. You will name them down. List any heirlooms and any special provisions for them. Some people, they have a special items that are very antique and they keep them. You list them also in the will questionnaire and who is going to take care of them after you pass away. Indicate how you want your assets to pass when you die and powers of attorney for personal care for property. All this information is the, these 20 questions will be on real questionnaire. And yeah, we are all we are basically done. In conclusion, a will's importance is clear regardless of your personal situation. How old are you? Are you sick? Are you thinking about death or not? It's very important to have this. Without a will, you have no input regarding the distribution of your property after your death or the person involved in administrating the estate. A local court will make those decisions and it has no authority to deviate from the law. In essence, the province will step into your shoes and make one of the decisions for you and your estate. And we wanna have a voice, we wanna have autonomy and control over everything. So the whole point of writing your will is for you guys and everyone as citizens to be able to have a voice regarding our life and regarding our funeral and regarding everything after we are gone. And we are just waiting for... 
And that was it. We came to the end. I just wanted to mention that, as I said in the beginning, we have financial coaching that's free regarding budgeting, credit, debt, and saving. This is our phone number that you guys can call. We have also free workshops, just the one that you attend today. And we can also email us at moneyandskills.fsgv.ca. We have one-on-one -on -one financial coaching for everyone. And thank you again for being here and thank you for having me. Uh, we were rushing things a little bit, but thank you. It was great to be here. <laughs>